Hi. I do a lot of one-to-one -one work with people on Skype, you know, people who are pursuing their musical studies in various ways. And some of that work is people writing harmony, doing theory exams, preparing for um, college, university exams, doing their harmony and so on. And I do quite a bit of work with composers as well. And I want in this video to talk about one subject that comes up quite a bit. And it's this, it's, the question essentially is, how do I move from one key to another? Or to put it technically, how do I modulate? So people find that they write something, but they're kind of stuck in a key and it's fine for a while. And after a while they think, well, it just sounds a bit tedious that I can't go somewhere else. Or they write the first part of their piece in one key and then they write the next part in a different key. And there's suddenly a bit of a jolt in the middle because the two things don't quite connect up. So what I'm gonna talk about now uh, belongs to a language of conventional harmony, if you like, of the kind of accepted Western code that certainly ran between 1600 and 1900 and in many ways still runs today. If you're wanting to write something that's really atonal, not in a key, well, this doesn't really fit with that. But if you're trying to write music in a key and you're thinking what I need is a bit of variety of key, I need to be able to move around keys a bit, how do I do it? Then this is for you. Because the way we move from one key to another essentially is to use something called a pivot chord. So what's a pivot chord? Well, a pivot chord is a chord that is common to the key that you're leaving as well as to the key that you're joining. So if you use a pivot chord, the modulation from one key to another goes nice and smoothly. And the way I sometimes explain it is this, say you're in one room and you want to move to the room next door, the only way to do that really is to walk through the door. I mean, you can try beaming through the wall if you want to, but it's not the easiest way of doing things. But the door is the thing that connects this room with that room. It's the thing that's common to both those spaces, if you like. So a pivot chord is kind of like a musical door. So what I've done here is I've listed all the chords in three different keys, but three keys that are fairly closely related. So C major, G major, F major. C major, of course, no sharps, no flats in the key signature. G major is just one key around the circle of fifths. It's got one sharp, happens to be F sharp. And then F major, which of course is one key on the flat side of C major, and it has a B flat. I've then written out the scales, so C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and I've then written out each of the notes that belongs to those chords. So chord one, chord two, three, four, five, six, seven, or you might call it a C chord, a D minor, an E minor, an F chord, a G chord, an A minor, a B diminished, if you're looking at labeling these in a slightly different way. The point is this, if I want to modulate from C major to G major, what are the pivot chords? In other words, the chords that belong to both of those keys. So let's color code this. So we're going to work in green, and we're going to see if we can find the chords that belong to both C major and G major. So let's have a look at this first one, C, E, G. Is this a chord in G major? Well, it is, because C, E, G there comes up here, doesn't it? So you can see that the C, E, G is a pivot chord. You can also see that it's a pivot chord into F major, but we'll come back to that later. Let's look at chord two, which is D, F, A. Well, you might think, great, that's a pivot chord. I've got D, F, A here. Actually, it isn't quite a pivot chord because this is F natural and this is F sharp. Now, there are ways you can kind of manipulate that a little bit, but it's not the most obvious pivot chord. Okay, what about chord three in C major, E, G, B? Well, actually, do you know what? If we see that chord there, we also see it here. So what's chord three in C major is chord six in G major. So that's a pivot chord. What about chord four in C major, F, A, C? Oh, great, F, A, C. Mm, not really, F sharp, A, C. So that's not really a genuine pivot chord. 
What about core five in C major, GBD? Oh, look, GBD, yeah, that's chord five in C major. It's chord one in G major. What about chord six, A, C, E? Oh, lovely, it's also one here. So chord six in C major is chord two in G major. What about B, D, F? Mm, not really, B, D, F sharp. So not a great pivot chord, but do you see, just looking at it like this, you've already isolated the four pivot chords that are common to C major and G major. Now, of course, if you went further away, the further away you go, the fewer the pivot chords are likely to be. You may even get to a point where you think, well, I'm trying to go from C major to F sharp major, and I can't find any pivot chords. Well, that's not a great surprise because you're moving from a key with no sharps to a key with six out of seven note sharp. So you're not gonna find a pivot chord. How do you go from C major to F sharp major? Well, you can either just wrench your way from one key to the other, which is not subtle, or you might think I've got to make a journey. So I might go to some other keys on the way until I get to a key that's going to give me access to some pivot chords. So do you see what I mean? Um, by the time you got round to B major, well, you know, chord one in B major is also chord four in F sharp major, so that would be a pivot chord. You might be able to work your way to B major via something else that gives you a pivot chord, and you can make a journey in that direction. But when you've got closely related keys, you'll find a number of pivot chords that are quite useful. Well, you might then have to make a decision as to which pivot chord you're gonna use. And of course, some of these chords will be stronger than others. We talk about the primary chords or the primary triads being numbers one, four, and five. They're the most significant ones. So when you look at this chord one here and you think it's chord four here, that's quite strong, isn't it? It's going from one primary chord to another primary chord. Here, when you look at chord three, chord three is a weaker chord. It's one of the least likely chords to be used, although it's a very effective chord, so I'm not saying don't use it, but it's a less obvious one in a way. And that's gonna take us up to chord six. Well, six is a bit stronger than three, so it's not impossible, but maybe it's less obvious than the move from one to four. It might just help make a few decisions. Here's a strong one, because this is chord five in C major, but it's chord one in G major, so that's a nice strong pivot chord, isn't it? Um, here's a slightly weaker one, but it might work very well. Chord six, that's going to take us to chord two. So just sort of mean you could make some decisions based on that. So what would it sound like? Again, don't worry about the musical style of this particularly. It's just to kind of hear the impact of it. So if I start by making up a piece of music in the key of C major by using these C major chords. I've arrived there on chord five, which is the G, B, D chord. I'm then gonna decide that this is my pivot chord because this chord five is also chord one in G. Once I've been through the pivot chord, I can say, well, it was chord five in C. I'm now going to call it chord one in G and I can just carry on in G major. So do you see what I've done? I've started in C major, I've arrived on chord five, I've renamed that chord one in G major, then I've carried on in G major. So that chord has been the door, the pivot chord. And it means you can have a nice smooth transition from one key to the next without there being a bit of a bump in the night because we've just jolted into another key without using a pivot chord. And by the same token, if I wanted to go from C major to F major, I could do exactly the same thing. So you can see that now chord one in C major is chord five in F major. You can see that chord two in C major is chord six in F. Three doesn't work because it's got a B natural and down here we've got a B flat. You can see here that FAC chord four in C major is chord one in F major, so that's a good one. GBD is no good because it's got B natural, F major's got B flat. Um, A, C, E is another one because that comes down here. 
This one doesn't work because it's got a B natural instead of a B flat. So again, you see we've got four pivot chords that would take us from C major to F major. They're not the same pivot chords that would take us from C major to G major. So whenever you're moving from one key to another, you've just got to work out the possibilities for pivot chords and again decide which might be the strong moves or the slightly weaker moves. So you might just think, well, chord three is not the strongest chord, so I could use chord six as a pivot chord to take me to chord three and F. It's not impossible, but there are other stronger possibilities. So if this time I start in C major, I might stop there and I think, Okay, what's going on here? That's chord four in C major, but it's also called one in F major. So having been through that as a pivot chord, I can then carry on in F major. And you see, once I've been through the pivot chord, then I just introduce the accidental for the new key or the accidentals, and then I'm in the new key. So that's how to modulate using pivot chords.